Hi, my name is Tiffany Sawicki. I'm a student in Mr. Knofke's ninth period chemistry honors class, and this is my science fair experiment on Fenton's reagent. Now, Fenton's reagent is a chemical reaction in which iron will act as a catalyst to produce free hydroxyls. So right now what I'm going to take is my iron sulfate aqueous solution in which I dissolved iron sulfate into water. Now what's happened here is it disassociated so that it produced iron, Fe plus 2, and sulfate separately. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pour out 50 milliliters of this into my glass vial. I'm going to pour it over here in my container. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 35% lab-grade hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and I'm going to add it in to the container. So you can see there is a slight bubbling reaction. Purposes of this experiment, though, I'm going to... add the same amount of water and I'm going to dilute the hydrogen peroxide to a 17.5 percent concentration. As you can see it is a very slow reaction but what is currently taking place is the Fe plus 2 is reacting with the hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and it is producing Fe plus 3 and two hydroxyls or hydroxide molecules. So the iron is oxidizing, meaning it is losing one electron, whereas the sulfate is our spectator ion and is not reacting. As you can see, there, is, there are no signs of a vigorous reaction taking place, only slight bubbling, which will become more apparent later. Mm, yeah, so that's basically Fenton's reagent. As you can see, I have Fenton's reagent, the solution that I have just created. Now, normally in real world applications, Fenton's reagent is used to treat wastewater and underground petroleum spills. For the purposes of this experiment, we're going to do it in reverse. Normally, you would have the oil spill on top of the water table, and then you would add Fenton's reagent, our solution of our mixture of iron and hydrogen peroxide. However, instead, well, instead, we're going to add our oil on top of Fenton's reagent because it just shows the reaction better. Which is what I'll do right now. So you can see the slight bubbling, and um, you can watch it react, which is why it's spreading out, bubbling, and breaking up slightly, in like little circles such as there. Well, as you can see, it's been a few minutes, and it's starting to uh, bubble more vigorously. Okay, so what I have right in here is this nifty little device called a PID, or photoionization detector. What it does is it measures volatile organics, and we will be using this to prove that this is actually reacting. So, if this is truly reacting as it should, it will be giving off volatile organics and it will be measured right here, the PPM, right? It says 0, 0.0 right now, meaning there are no volatile 
volatile organics. And now we are going to test this solution. Up point one, point two. So as you can see, though it's not a lot, a lot, it is giving off some volatile, volatile organics. So we will check back in on this again later. Okay, so the, it's bubbling more vigorously now, and we're going to check the the PID again. And it's increasing. Oh, point seven. As you can see, it's getting much higher than it was before. So the reaction is occurring more rapidly now. Oh, it's starting to smoke slightly. How nice. He's all good to go. We shall test it again. Oh, look at that skyrocket. It's really starting to smoke now. And bubble. Holy. And the reading is much higher than before, it's still increasing. It says oh. and it's over seventy ppm. Nice. would be that high-pitched buzzing noise. That really hurts my ears. Now this reaction is really going.